Zadrizes bus daris kostal. Should I leave it there? Should I give up? Or should I just keep chasing pavements? Even if it leads nowhere. Oh, House of the Dragon is six days away, baby. And I'm singing Adele and I'm waking up and my son's having his bottle. And we're discussing House of the Dragon. There were several new one minute teaser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, teaser trailers that were released on the HBO Max official website, as you can see behind me. I'm going to discuss each one of these, um, and I don't really know how long this video is going to be because I haven't really made it yet. Please do me a massive favor, and if you haven't already done so and you enjoy my shit, slap a like on this video. Like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> Get it? And then, and then also, this is the most important part, make sure you subscribe. And then once you're subscribed, turn your notifications all the way on. Lot 2 and 11. Lot Spinal Tap reference. Because Lot 11 is high, but 10 is like Yeah. So do that, please. So that way you'll get an alert every single time I drop a video throughout the wait for House of the Dragon Season 1. Or as it's known on this channel, The Long Nerds. Well, I'm Viserys Targaryen. Uh, so there's three things to take away from the Viserys teaser. The first one being that he wants to, he's not just a, a peacetime king, which is something that I'll talk about here in a second, but he wants to make sure the Targaryens <clears throat> stay in power, which, uh, his, Viserys in the books, in the book, Fire and Blood Part 1, is kind of an idiot. He allows this to happen, he ignores the writing on the wall, and for the most part, we have no POV, so we don't know what his internal thinking is. Ryan Condal, Miguel Sapochnik, and George R. R. Martin, and Patty Considine in particular, the actor who's playing this series, has added so much more depth to his character. He's not just someone who allows this to happen and he's a peacetime king, right? He's someone who literally wants to keep the Targaryens in power. He gets dragon dreams, he gets the same dreams that Aegon gets that makes him conquer Westeros to begin with. So Viserys is very much going to be a quintessential, probably everybody's favorite character in this first season. He has to be the Sean Bean, the Ned Stark type of character. Like... Obviously, he's got way more power than Ned, but he's just got so much more depth to him, and I think that's something that the Fire and Blood book was lacking, right? Also, the Rogue Prince, the Princess and the Queen, and then part of uh, World of Ice and Fire. All of that is mostly reiterated in Fire and Blood Part 1 with a lot of uh, depth added. Now, Peacetime King, that's pretty obvious. I've spent many of many videos talking about this, but Jaehaerys, the king who was in power before King Viserys, the king who kind of starts the dance... Jaehaerys ruled for something like 55 years and he was literally known as the Old King because he took the reins of power at 14 and ruled throughout Westeros' most prosperous time. Like, yes, Aegon the Conqueror conquered Westeros and united the Seven Kingdoms. Six, Dorne wasn't brought in until Daron the Young Dragon, right? He did more than that. He kept the peace for the longest time. So King Viserys has to sort of keep that running, that peacetime king theme. Like, he's devoted his entire reign to keeping what Jaehaerys had previously established going. And that's obviously why he sort of is preoccupied and doesn't officially make his son and daughter marry. That's the one thing that could have happened to stop this. And he goes, oh no, it's Alicent reaching for power. And like, yes, it might have been. And like, yes, Aegon and, and Rhaenyra never really got along, but that's not exactly uh, exotic in Westeros. There's a plenty of couples who were forced to be together that didn't fucking like each other, but their marriage was like a union that may have potentially prevented some wars, right? This is what... Viserys could have done, but it's awesome. I cannot wait to see this. Um, like I said, they've added so much more depth to his character from the books. Okay, nextly, I'm not going to talk about every single thing they mention, right? The actor, uh, Emma Darcy, who's playing, or portraying Rainier, rather, they mentioned a bunch of things about their character, but I've, like I said, I've reiterated it several times. Reiterated it. Alright, so, yes, this is, this is right near with our heir Jacaris. This is footage we have not seen before. This is super exciting. The Jacaris is played by the actor Harry Collette. I follow him on Instagram. Speaking of which, go follow me on Instagram at sir underscore hunts underscore reviews. But this dude's gonna fucking murder. He's known as the Prince of Dragonstone, and he's going to get busy with Sarah Snow up in the north. Uh, basically, when the when the war breaks out and after the Black Council, Rhaenyra sends Jacaris up north to go and treat with the Starks, which is supposed to be the more dangerous mission. She sends Lucera south to treat with Storms in, but we probably won't get uh, the footage of Jace Jacaris, her heir, sitting next to her 
um, of him being up north with the Starks and Cregan and all that until next season. Like, I don't know if it'll be able to fit. Maybe we'll see him just arriving at Winterfell, and that'll be one of the last scenes we see of him in the season, and he'll treat with Cregan Stark, and maybe there's a little bit of hostility, and uh, the way they cut it makes you think that there's going to be some amnesty between them next season. That's obviously not the case. Cregan and Jacaris become the best friends, and he even supposedly, according to Mushroom, marries Sarah Snow, who is supposed to be either a bastard daughter of Cregan Stark or a bastard sister, right? Um... And then also, mostly what Emma Darcy is talking about in this uh, character breakdown is like how Rhaenyra is a woman, this is a patriarchal society, and obviously she's got to deal with it. She is the realm's delight, and most of the realm pledges fealty to her, but then 20 years go by and they act like they forgot what the fuck they said. So that's what the main thing we're going to be seeing with... This character for this season, literally the main character, Rhaenyra, is that she's fighting a society that is is supposed to be against her, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this show takes it to a, a, a new level, because this is already the major theme in the books, is that King Viserys, the king in power at the time when the dance technically starts, when the seeds are planted, he named Rhaenyra his heir, and kind of like... You're not supposed to do that. It's always supposed to be a male heir. Even though the king can name his heir, usually it's a male heir. That's not the case. Obviously, this show is going to explore those themes in depth. I can't fucking wait. The next character I want to talk about, Daemon Targaryen, everybody's favorite rogue prince. Now, here's the thing, all right? Matt Smith keeps saying that Daemon is an agent of chaos and that he kind of, like, just wants to wear the crown just to watch the world burn. And yes, that is his motivation, motivation, right? Motivation. In the beginning... But that's not who he is towards the end of this story. And they're, they're hammering that and laying it down on thick as fuck. Because when he... Sorry, I didn't mean to curse. You say shit all the time, little boy. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Say cunt. <laughs> ah, um, but yeah, so... He, he his character arc is going to be one of the greatest in all of A Song of Ice and Fire because by the end of this story, you realize that no, he's not an agent of chaos. Yes, he is a seasoned battle commander and also, he's not a womanizing, abusing Targaryen half-mad princeling. That He has uh, an arc in Fire and Blood that shows you even early on that he's not a foolish fool, and that's by taking Hall. He takes Hall without really killing anyone. He does it with his dragon Caraxes, and that shows his battle prowess as a seasoned commander. He's the most experienced battle commander in all, in the greens and the blacks. But yeah, Damon's fucking coming for you, and he's probably gonna ejaculate all over everyone's faces. And then real quick, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about them, but Mysaria and Kristen Cole. So Mysaria is Misery, the White Worm. I will say that the actress who's playing her, Sonoya Mazuna, we got to hear a little bit of, of a scene. We got to see a little bit of a scene from the show, and I, I'm not necessarily digging the accent. Like, she's supposed to be a dancer at first, right? If I'm not mistaken, she's from Lys. They speak Valyrian over there, so hopefully she's going to speak Valyrian with Damon, and that's why she has that accent. But the actress is English, and I feel like that accent is kind of perfect because literally Westeros is fucking... England, but anyway, um, so yeah, I don't know, uh, but uh, super excited, because she not, she's not only quintessential in blood and cheese, but also she kind of switches sides and betrays Damon a little bit, this is one of those characters, Misery, the White Worm is what her enemies refer to her as, the White Worm, Misery, right, um, she's basically Damon's concubine, she becomes his Lady of Whisperers, she becomes Rhaenyra's uh, Lady of Whisperers, which is basically a female version of Varys, and Laris the Clubfoot on this show, who will be on the greens, ah, part of House, House Strong in, uh, uh, you know, he becomes the ruler of House Strong when his uh, brother and father are killed in a mysterious fire that, a fire that was either caused by Damon, Viserys, or uh, maybe even Rainier herself. Who knows? We're going to find out on the TV show. We've seen them have clips, right? But anyway, female version for the Blacks is Mysaria. Uh, like I said, she's going to be one of those characters who they have to expand upon greatly in this show. All right, then lastly, our boy, the Kingmaker, Kristen Cole. Now, he's being played by Fabian Frank Hall. Uh, I don't know, I think he's French or... He's got a British accent. Uh, he might be Indian, too. But, um, anyway, uh, I thought Kristen Cole uh, is... 
going to be one of those characters who splits the fandoms. Like, he's on the greens, but he's technically right, and he's kind of like a Chad, like, anti-pussy lover boy, right? Because he sort of refuses Rhaenyra when she does these things, and he ends up discovering, in the books, discovering Rhaenyra in a brothel with Damon, learning how to please, well, Kristen Cole himself. Anyway, Kristen Cole wears fucked-up, ill-fitting, bullshit armor, shows up at this tourney, and then beats the shit out of Damon and several others, uh, and basically wins Rhaenyra's favor. We've seen... This in the trailer, in the clip that they have of his character breakdown, we see a few more scenes, but what I will ultimately say is that I'm looking forward to the most is his scenes with Aemon Targaryen. Like, he was fighting with him, he was training with him, he basically turns Aemon into the greatest fighter in the in, in the realm next to Daemon. And you could argue that in a one-on-one -on -one combat, Aemon would beat the shit out of Daemon because Kristen Cole beat the shit out of Daemon, and Kristen Cole is Aemon's tutor. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you could, please do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> 69. <laughs> House of Dragons is going to be here in six days. And at this point, it may be five days. <laughs> so please do me a massive favor. Slap a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe. Have your notifications turned on. And then consider checking out my Patreon over on patreon.com slash your reviews. My name is Mark. And I long night until three is supposed to